Well then, for more than 30 years, no commentator in Irish sport, politics and culture has been the subject of so much love, hatred and fascination as my next guest. And here's the reason why. Ronaldo's performance tonight was a disgrace to football. This fellow Ronaldo is a cop. You got away with this old moving the goalpost trick on Friday night. You're not getting away with it tonight. Now answer me a question. Yes. Right? If you were a kid at Manchester United, which yeah. you were, and Bobby Charlton said he's no good, what's he doing playing in the team? How would you feel about that? That's exactly what Bobby Charlton said. He was the only coach in the world who refused to go and see the players and find out who was about. Will you let me finish? I didn't interrupt you before. If you are going to quote gutter journalists calling Roy Keane a cop, you can do it on your own. If you're going to throw Mark Lane, Mother Teresa, you can do that on your own as well. Oh, There's lots of tabloid journalists out there. I'm not going to listen to that kind Fair of crap. <laughs> well, he's never been afraid to speak his mind and has been making headlines all week for a change. Please welcome Eamon Dunphy, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very well, Ryan. How are you? There's a, there's a moment in your book where your mother drags you over to your television and she says, says I think there's two aimers, there's that fella and there's you. Yeah. Who's in here tonight? Me. Yeah. yeah she didn't like that fella. What does she mean by that fella and you? What, who who well, are the two aimers? I think aimers? my mother thought the people who were in the public arena, yeah. whether they were on the radio or on television, were all a bit of a cod. Yes. And they were all... Phony. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And they were putting on a show. Yeah. And she didn't think yeah. that... I should be there. She would have much preferred if I'd have been, yeah. you know, her son, rather than the thing that you become when you go into public, uh, you know, life as a journalist or whatever. And yeah. uh, she, she was a modest person, yes. a normal person, and didn't like that kind of thing. But you were, you, you, you get emotional talking about your mother because she obviously had, was a critical person in your life. Yeah, I think everybody's mother is critical yeah. in their lives. So my mother was no different. But... People, decent, ordinary people, they don't really want to be shouting out in the public square. <laughs> my mother saw those clips she showed. What she? Like, oh my God, it's a yeah. holy show! But that's what I do. That's what I do for, did for a living. But is and that, so, is, that is that panto Eamon versus your mother's son? Exactly. But there is that kind of divide, don't you find? Without question. So there's a private person. Yes. And there's a public persona. Correct. And the difference between a persona which is a confection of some kind. Like shouty Mac Pentro sort of thing versus... Yeah, well, it's public passion. Yeah. And television yeah. amplifies everything. Right. In other words, you can be very gentle in your private life, but you can be passionate. And what's passion and nice in, a, in private mm. on a television programme can look like a rant. Are you a gentle person in private? Yes, I am, very and much are, so. do you, But, do you, but you, you, you have a propensity to party like the best of us. I did, Ryan, and I saw you in my parting years, and if you want to go there, Ryan, yeah. I'm very happy. I did, but, I, the, the, I, no, but, but I, I have to say... Uh, I was always in good form. You were always in good form, but you did say, in, you were talking in Hot Press this week, that you gave up cocaine eventually, but not too long ago. Well, I gave it up a while ago, but uh, your, your very good friend and, and, and my friend, Jerry Ryan, died um, of, we think... Uh, as a result of taking Traces cocaine, of, yes. yes. Yeah. Um, and I love Jerry and Maura. Yeah. Um, and I really did think his death was tragic for his children, five of them. And it did make me think that's really stupid. Um, and I also knew a lady who was a dealer who died of her, taking her own stuff. Mm. And that was around in the Celtic Tiger years. Um, Were you taking much cocaine at that stage? No, not much. What, what is... What is it? it would be once or twice a month, maybe. Yeah. Uh, in Lily's, Ryan, but yeah, I think I saw town. you. Yeah. yeah. But you never saw me with cocaine. I, can I never much. saw you yeah. with cocaine. No, it's not something I've ever you were done. always very clever. Yeah, yeah no. Well, or good. <laughs> <laughs> but you, get, you decided that's the end of that, then. Yeah. And you gave up at that stage. I, I, I really didn't do recreational drugs very much. Yeah. I did them a bit, mm. but I don't. I think they should be decriminalised. Despite everything. Well, because you take the gangsters out of business, mm. and you'd be getting a drug if you wanted it from a chemist or a doctor, mm. rather than from the local hood. 
we can't get into that conversation now because there's... Do you want to drop a water there or something? Yeah. Um, when, when I was looking back at your career, and, and for me, in my life, 1990 was when you burst into my consciousness because yeah. of the World Cup qualification and so on. And, you know, we all ran out onto the street when the games were... We were winning yeah. games and so on. And, and you became a kind of a national figure of some discussion oftentimes not a popular figure. No. And let's go back to the character or the person that your mother was describing a minute ago. That's the son. I'd like to talk about you as the father of young children who you've, you've always adored. Yes. And you had to watch them go through yes. some crap because of yes. you, what you were doing exactly. on the television. Yes. What did they go through because of what you were doing? Well, my daughter went on the street with all the other kids, uh, Colette, after the penalty shootout, and after the game against Holland, when we qualified for the knockout stages, yeah. and all the kids chased her off the street. And my son, who a, a, is a terrific lad, Tim, mm. he was, you know, bullied a bit in school and at discos. And my parents were still alive then, and, and would, they didn't like it. Would, they have, would the kids have ever said to you, Dad, do you know what, all that ranting, raving, while I appreciate it, it's panto sauce. Yeah. It's getting... Well, it's not, it's not panto okay, stuff, Okay, well, let's don't call it that. It's, 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 called passion. it's called journalism. Well, it's also called passion. A lot of people do journalism in, in a way that's not as passionate, shall we say. It's probably right. not yeah, as interesting for that. but there is a place for passion, yeah. journalism and commentary, and it always has to be. And I thank God they're for it, by the way. I'm yeah. all for it. But I'm just asking yeah. the question about your... Did your kids ever say to you, Dad, that's, to get, that's getting us into trouble at home here? No, they didn't. Um, and, you know, I think that's testimony to my wife, yeah. uh, their mother... Mm -hmm. Sandra, and to the closeness we had as a family. But when I reflected on it uh, after everything, I did question what I was doing and what my motivation was and who was paying the bill. And I wasn't, I, was, well, I wasn't really paying the bill. You know, my kids were paying the bill. And then, you know, that's not good. It's not right to be what they call a controversialist is OK. Now, I had an idea of journalism, which was to rock the boat. I don't like this society. I don't like the establishment. And I like to expose them, to put it up to them, mm. to criticise them, to go places where other people won't go. That's my desire. But there is a price to pay and you don't want someone else paying your bill. And my kids and my family sometimes did. And so that's a wrong. And in the book that is I've it, written... Is it, is it a regret, Eamon? Well, it's very hard to say you regret things. Mm. It's, I think you should always pick up your own tab, don't you? And you don't like someone else picking up your tab, especially yeah. if they're your family. So I don't regret things I've done, but I do acknowledge that that is not a very big thing to do, to put other people in your frame. So you realise it's a big thing to do, but you don't regret doing it? I did it because, you know, I am what I am, but I would like to think that in other ways I would have been a good son or a good father. Yeah. So you balance it out at the end of the day. But I wouldn't be in the self-justification business. Yeah. I'm yeah. just a hack. I'm just a journalist. I just do my thing. Would you say you're, you're, you're anti-establishment? Is that what you're saying? You're, I am, yeah. OK. And when, when... Because they cause so much suffering, man. To ordinary people. Yeah. Did you, have a, did you have a close friendship with Charlie McCreevy? I didn't have a close friendship with Charlie McCreevy, but I was the cheerleader for Charlie McCreevy. And was he establishment at the time? I don't think Fianna Fáil might have ever been part of the establishment. Really? I think, well, Three no. terms in office? Well, funnily enough, I think Fianna Fáil have always been subversive. You should know this. Yeah. Your family pedigree is very Fianna Fáil. Yeah. And they've always been subversive. They've never been official or Ireland as such. They've always been dodgy. They've always been rogues. And they've always been fun. Yeah. As opposed to, you know... So, you're, so Fianna Fáil was, was, was never establishment despite three terms. And, and Fianna, so are you suggesting Fianna Gael has always been establishment? Well, there's a difference. These are subtle... Distinctions. Okay. And Fianna, Fianna O'Toole wrote a great essay once about the difference between Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael. And if I can paraphrase him, a brilliant sure. piece of work, yeah. he said that Fine Gael believed they were born to rule and Fianna Fáil believed they were born to steal. And 
that's not fair to Finton, but they were, Fianna Fáil saw themselves as a popular movement yeah. of the ordinary people, and Fine Gael saw themselves as a ruling elite. So, and I think that distinction, oddly enough, still obtains despite the three so, terms in office. OK, so Charlie McCreevy was not an establishment figure. Well, was Bertie? Well, I'll ask you the question. No, no, no. Do you no, think sorry, Bertie no, was? No. Tell you, when you're sitting here, you ask me the questions. In the meantime... I tried uh, that, but it didn't work. <laughs> so so let's, let's keep this relationship very, very okay. joking. But we'll leave with Bertie in a second. I, I, there's another big figure in, in, in Irish, uh, I suppose, sporting history of recent times, is Roy Keane. Yes. Roy Keane in the, in the news this week, not uh, because of Alex Ferguson's book, which got as much yes. coverage as your own in this country, as you know. Yeah. Uh, where are you with Roy Keane these days? Friend or foe? Well, I was never a friend. Okay. I, he, he, he and his agent, Michael Kennedy, or solicitor, asked me to write his book. Were you, is, to use your word, a cheerleader, uh, say, during Saipan, for example? Yes. Okay, so... I was totally on his side. But not a Saipan. friend, the difference. No, oh, big time. Okay. I was doing a job. I was contracted to write his book, which was a pleasure to do. I think every journalist in the country wanted to do it, because sure. he's such an, a fascinating figure. I did that, and then subsequently, I wrote something critical about him in uh, the newspaper I work for, and um, his manager, Michael Kennedy, came on the phone. He said, Eamon, what's going on? I said, well, you know, I have a job to do. This is my day yeah, job. Yeah. You're hacking. And you bought me for the book, but you didn't buy me for life. Mm. So we were never friends, and we're not enemies, because we don't, we don't really know each other. OK, well, that's fair enough. Uh, what about Ferguson's comments? He has a whole chapter on Roy Keane in his book. Yeah. He does, yeah. Well, some some uh, nice things he says. Yeah. And some not so much. Yeah, I mean, Ferguson is entitled to say what he wants, mm -hmm. but I think the general feeling is that he's let himself down a little bit. Do you think that? I think he has. I mean, he's, his stature in the game is the greatest manager in the modern game. Uh, to be hitting down on kids, like playing for Liverpool, or kids who didn't make it at Manchester United, isn't the best thing. Uh, I don't think it's good for him. He's entitled to, everyone's entitled to their say. Um, Keane was a great, great player for Manchester United uh, for a long time. And so was David Beckham. He's criticised David Beckham, his choice of his wife. wife I don't think you're really entitled her, her to her influence that. on him. I don't think that's really... Do you think it damaged true. Roy Keane's chances, if he was ever even interested in the Irish job? Well, I think he probably was interested in it. I think, I think it damaged his chances not just for the Irish job, but for any job. Well, I mean, if you think of all the success they had together and all the f good fortune Alex Ferguson has had, and Roy Keane, yes. you know, I think a bit more generosity, you know, a bit more uh, care, a bit more love. Why is he coming out with all this stuff so at 71 years of age? Who, do you, who are you tipping for the Irish job these days? I think Mick McCarthy's the most likely candidate. Is that um, one you would welcome? Yes, I think I wouldn't dissent greatly from that. No. I, I think he'd be a good choice. I think he's, it's 11 years in Saipan. I think he made a mistake in Saipan, and Ferguson's book confirms that Keane was kicked out rather than walked out. But I think he kept Wolves in the Premier League. Uh, I always he, worry when I hear you say uh, he'd make a good choice. I'm waiting for it, but not a great choice. So do, do, are you going to stick it as a good choice and a great choice? I think it'd be a very good choice, Brian. And these, distinct, <laughs> these distinctions, as you well know, are very important. <laughs> They're way for thin also. Eamon, it's been good to see you tonight. Thanks for coming in. My pleasure. Eamon Dunphy, ladies and gentlemen. Eamon's book is called The Rocky Road, and it's in bookshops now. Time